Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today I'm going to walk you through the process of doing a simple oil change on our 2012 Honda TRX 420 Rancher. Pretty simple to do. Let's step over and look at the parts and the tools we're going to need to pull this off. There's only one decision that you need to make here. Do I go back with the standard GN4 oil or do I spend a little bit more and upgrade to the semi-synthetic? Well, that depends on how you're going to use the machine. If you're really working it hard, I would advise going ahead and getting the better oil. Beyond that, you just want to pick up an oil filter. And if you will check the link in the description below, we actually have a shopping cart already put together with everything you're going to need to pull this off. Now, if yours is a little bit different, if you would visit our website at partzilla.com, it's really easy to use. Start off by picking the manufacturer and then drill down to whatever part or list of parts that you need for your machine. If you're still having trouble, then give us a call. That's what we're here for, and we can guide you to the correct parts for your application. Now, as far as the special tools go, well, there's only really one. I recommend using a good torque wrench because the last thing you want to do is strip out that oil drain bolt on the bottom of the engine. Then you will be in a mess. Now, the first thing we need to do to get this process started is go ahead and start it. Let it warm up for about two to three minutes. It doesn't have to be up to full operating temperature because you don't want to scald yourself. But we do want to get the oil circulating in there. That way we can extract the most out of it. So I'm going to crank it up, let it idle for two or three minutes, and then we can get started. Let's start off now that she's warmed up by getting off the panels. No special tools, they just pull away. We're going to go ahead and take off both sides. While we're here, we're going to take out the filler slash dipstick so it'll drain faster. Now to drain it, we don't need this side off, but we will need it when it comes time to change out the filter, which is right back there. So we're set up and ready to drain. All you're going to need here is just a 17 millimeter. And it goes right here. And when we drop this out, we want to make sure you don't lose that little crush washer that it's on it. Now, how often do you need to be doing this? Well, according to the maintenance schedule, at least every 12 months or 100 hours or 600 miles, whichever one comes first. If you keep on that schedule, your engine's gonna last a long time. While that is draining, let's go ahead and swap out our oil filter. And all you need here is just an eight millimeter. Now it is gonna make a bit of a mess, just inevitable. So let's go ahead and put a rag there. So oil doesn't go all over our frame and that lower belly pan. All these bolts are the same length, so there's no getting them mixed up. There's our filter. Told you it was going to make a mess. So you had our filter, and then you also notice that there's a spring up inside. Now, this is critical. You want to make sure when you're installing the filter that it has this marking outside towards the outside of the machine. Otherwise, if you put it in backwards, you're going to destroy your engine, and we don't want that. There's two things you need to check at this point. On this cover, you've got an O-ring that goes to the outside. Make sure there's no cuts or anything on it. And then there's also one recessed into the, uh, the block itself. So make sure they're in place. Then all we have to do is put the cover back on. Get those tightened back down. And I caution you here to use a small ratchet or either at least grab it all the way up at the head like this because these aren't large threads and you don't want to strip them. So just a little bit is all it's going to take. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping here. Get this cleaned back up. With that in place, we're finished on this side. So let's go ahead and put our cover back in. It just has a slot down at the bottom. And then these four points where it plugs into these little rubber grommets. So hit that bottom first. Slide it up under the seat. There she goes. Easy. Let's get our drain plug back in place. And Honda recommends that you replace the crush washer every single time. I think that's a little overkill. And as long as I don't see 
any issues, any cracks, any grooves. I'm good with reusing it at least once or twice. Now we're going to set the torque to 18 foot-pounds. That's all it takes. Now with that torque now, let's get it filled back up. Now this should hold right at three quarts after doing a complete oil change with the oil filter. I find sometimes that's a little bit too much, but we can safely go ahead and dump in two and a half, start it up for a few seconds, check it, and then bring it up to level. I've decided, of course, to go with the semi-synthetic. Up to you which way you want to go. So we've got roughly two and three quarters quarts in there. Because this is a dry sump system and we're talking about a large volume of oil, you want to let it idle for two to three minutes, not touching the throttle, just let it idle. If you blip the throttle, that will affect the level when it comes time to check it. Once it's done idling for two or three minutes, then we let it sit for another three or four. At that point, we can go in and check the level and add if necessary. So let's see where we ended up. When you're doing this, you do not screw it back in. You just plunge it and then take the reading. All right, she is right at the bottom. So Honda was pretty much dead on about it needing three quarts. So this should bring it up to the appropriate level. Now let's take another reading. Shouldn't be required to restart it now because we're actually just bringing the level up. So let's take a peek see where we ended up. And there you go, right at the bottom of the top of the mark. So that is as much as we need to have in there. Get that tightened back up and get our cover back on. Same scenario as the other side. You got this little slot goes in the floorboard. Once it's in place, put this up under the seat and then hit your four points to hold it in place. Well, all right, guys, that wraps this one up. I told you it was going to be easy. Listen, if you need any parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. Now, if you want the exact listing of what we used on this one, check that link in the description below and that'll take you straight to a shopping cart that's ready to go. If you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. Listen, we just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.